Hi class, and welcome to your very first video for AP Biology. So this video is just going to be sort of an introduction to the class, sort of tell you how the class is going to run, um, and just hopefully get you excited about it, because I'm really excited about it. This is, I can't say it's my favorite class, I guess I'm not allowed to say that, but I love teaching AP Biology, and I really hope that you'll love learning it. So in this class all year, I'm going to be constantly challenging you to make connections across themes, across ideas, not only within biology, but across disciplines, science, social studies, uh, whatever you can think of, especially math. We're going to be doing a lot of math in this uh, class as well. And I hope that you challenge me as well to make connections. But the central theme all year is evolution, and that's why I had you do your summer assignment over evolution. So we will constantly come back to evolution through every unit. And so these are just some of the units, so these are all of the units actually that we're going to be studying. And as we study them, we're just we're going to be connecting them to one another. We're going to be connecting them back to evolution. Um, and so I'm really excited about that because this is a change from the way that the course has been run in the past uh, however many years AP Biology has been around. It's a new curriculum this year, which maybe you've heard about. Instead of getting through that entire textbook that you have next to you right now, we only have to get through maybe about 60 or 70 percent of it. And all the while, we're connecting across chapters. Um, we're not going to, you know, go linearly through the textbook. We're going to jump around and make connections as we go. And I just love this quote, uh, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. And we're going to realize that, that as we study all these units, they only make sense when we consider evolution. Here is the framework for this new AP Biology class, and these next couple slides are directly from the College Board. I just want you to get an idea about how the curriculum is sort of organized. There are four big ideas. The first one has to do with evolution. The second one has to do with how living systems need energy and molecular building blocks to grow. A uh, third one is all about information transmission. So this is mostly about you know your DNA and RNA and genetics. And then the last one is sort of more ecology. Just the idea that all of these systems are constantly interacting and that these interactions possess complex properties. So as you watch your videos and as we go through the course, I will always be referring to what big idea are we on today. And we'll be connecting big ideas together for sure as well. Now underneath of the big ideas, we have something called enduring understandings. Um, these are things that are going to sort of travel throughout the course. They don't apply to just one concept. They apply to many concepts. For example, one example of an enduring understanding underneath Big Idea 1 is change in the genetic makeup of a population over time is evolution. So this would be a concept that we would come back to in genetics, obviously in evolution. Um, and so when I do the videos, I do put up these enduring understandings so that you sort of have a frame of reference for what topic we are talking about. Underneath the enduring understandings, uh, we have something called an essential knowledge. Essential knowledges are more specific, they're more detailed, they're content specific. So um, underneath that first enduring understanding is essential knowledge about natural selection. And then there's usually things underneath of that that the student has to know that you have to know. So you would be responsible for knowing all of these things about natural selection. And all of this, this whole framework, is posted on the course website, which I'll show you here at the end of the video. Also new this year, which I'm really excited about, is an emphasis on science practice. It's not so much now about content that you have to memorize and know. It's more about skills that you're going to build and use throughout the course. And I've made a poster, and these scientific practices are going to be posted in the classroom, and I will always be referring to what practice we are using um, on that day. So using representations and models, using a lot of math, especially in lab and data analysis, data collection, data analysis, work with scientific explanations. So I'm really excited to challenge you with these practices. So skills are just as important as content and that's new this year. Really before it was all about content. Now you're going to be tested on skills. Okay, now what you might be thinking, okay, what does all this have to do with me? What do I have to know? You have to know the learning objectives. So the learning obje objectives are a uh, sort of a collaboration between the content, so the essential knowledges, and then the scientific practices. And so I've also posted the learning objectives by unit on the website. Um, you don't need to, to memorize them. You don't even have to look at them. This is almost more for me that I know that I'm teaching you what you're going to be tested on on the AP exam because these learning objectives are what are going to show up on that exam in May. 
So let's talk about that exam. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be different than in years past. So if you do get an exam study book, please make sure that it is up to date, that it is going to be the 2013 test. There are 55 multiple choice and five grid -ins. So you have 90 minutes for both of these. Um, when I say grid -in, I mean it's a math equation or a problem. And so you're going to fill in the number that you get as your answer. And that's 50% of your grade. The other 50% are sort of your essays. You've got two longer essays. Uh, one of those will definitely connect to the labs. Expect to sp spend between 20 and 25 minutes of that. And then the um, other seven are single short answer and only three to 10 minutes on those. Okay, what is our class going to look like? I created this graphic um, for me and for you just so that we can sort of understand how the day-to-day -day class is going to work. You might notice some of these verbs. These are Bloom's taxonomy. There are Bloom's uh, ways of knowing or ways of learning. Um, so at the bottom, we've just got the, the basic ways of knowing, right? Understanding, remembering. That's not really that hard to do, especially for AP students. So this is what you're going to do at home. You're going to be watching the videos for the flipped classroom. You're going to be doing a lot of self-study on your own, taking notes, answering questions on your own. So this is what you're going to be doing at home, understanding and remembering. Then everything else we're going to be doing in class, applying that knowledge you learned in the videos, looking at real-world scenarios and experiments. We're going to look at case studies and scientific, actual scientific papers and analyze them and analyze their data. You're going to be creating not only lab reports, but hopefully some other projects I'll have you be creating as well. Um, you're going to evaluate, uh, hopefully you'll be evaluating your work and others' work. And at the top, definitely a big part of this class for me and you this year is reflection. In class, lots and lots of laps. And hopefully I'm going to try to get some guest speakers in and go on some field trips to make everything sort of real world for you. Um, so what are you responsible for? First and probably most importantly is watching the videos. Only really one or two videos per week <clears throat> and then you have to take notes on them. And you really have to take some good notes because we're not going to be taking notes in class. We will certainly go over the notes you took in class and expand and elaborate on them, but this is your primary mechanism for getting down that content. Um, I will also post on the website uh, pages that go along with the content. I'm not asking you to read every sen sentence of that book, but I'm asking you to sort of use that textbook as a supplement. So maybe there was one part of the video that you just really didn't understand. Well, go back to the textbook, read over that section, and then add to your notes where needed. And that's why I have you have three different pens. One color is going to be for when you take your original notes. A second color is going to be when you add to them by reading, and a third color is going to be when you add to them in class. So I can visually see by looking at your notebook the colors that you are writing in. Be ready for mini quizzes any day, and these mini quizzes are going to be taken online, so that's uh, one reason why you're going to have your laptop or tablet with you. Um, sometimes I will tell you when they're going to be, and sometimes I won't. Um, and then complete what you should know questions. So all of these components are sort of the content, the basic remembering and understanding. These are going to help you get the content down. And then the rest of it in class is more of the skills and the applying of the knowledge. You're going to part at least 30% of the class is going to be lab work. So reading labs, completing pre-labs, working well with your partner, uh, completing lab analysis and reports. So please be prepared for that. Um, Overall, what do I expect of you? I want you to participate in class discussions and activities. I want you to be an active learner. I want you to bring up topics that you want to talk about. This is your class. Um, the learning is in your hands. So at any moment in time, I want you to bring up um, you know, challenges or questions that you have that we can go over and discuss as a class. All right, Evernote and Google Docs are going to be some of these web-based tools that we use in our one-to-one -one environment. Um, because we are sort of piloting this, we're going to try to go paperless as much as possible. So Evernote, this is going to be for where you store everything, you organize your notes, your assignments, your reflections. I'm hoping this is your e-portfolio of all your work that you have to take with you into college. And then Google Docs is a great way to create any type of document, um, a document, a presentation, a spreadsheet, a drawing, and you can also collaborate with your partners on this as well. So we'll be using these um, hand in hand. All right, final items. What are you responsible for before the first day of school? 
Well, summer assignment, you've got to turn that in, and I'm going to show you how to turn that in in a second. Um, below this video, you'll find a short quiz, and this is just showing me that you watch this video and you understand everything. Also on the website are two options for completing an Evernote tutorial. Um, maybe you already know about Evernote, you've used it, you don't have to do these tutorials. This is just for you so that you can get comfortable with Evernote. I do expect you to come in with an Evernote account and understanding how to set up a notebook and, and a note in the uh, Evernote. And then on the website, I'll show you um, a getting to know you form and a getting to know me form. And I'll explain what that is when I show you um, on the website here in a second. And all of this is due by the first day of school.